Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series as we continue through the week in February here. Just remember, before we get started, uh, we are with you five days a week, Monday through Friday. Tune in, download the podcast. If you haven't done so, you can go to reradiolive.com, or you can go to iTunes, download the podcast, follow us, uh, share the word. Happy to um, continue to provide you, the listeners, with education and information. That's what we do in uh, the area of real estate to help you make wise decisions. We'll continue to do that. Just a reminder, if you need any help on the purchase side, I uh, make a living with helping people with their residential financing, whether it's purchase financing, if you need to refinance, I'm here to help you with that. You could reach out to me, text or call 408-838-9060, or you could always email me at joe at reradiolive.com. Two things we're going to cover today. In these great quick uh, podcast series, which I love, uh, get information out quick, swiftly, and allow people to continue to learn. One is the question uh, we hear a lot uh, with rising interest rates, is now a still good time to buy? We'll cover that the first part of the podcast. And then some of the kind of the smart tax tips for 2017 to keep an eye on and some of the things I'm going to help you prepare for if you're thinking about buying a home I'm going to help you kind of look at some of the stuff that you should do to get in, get your kind of liabilities and um, in order, so let's say, before you buy a home. So we're going to discuss that as well. All right, let's first talk a little bit about that question that's out there a lot that comes up. Uh, get questions, emails, phone calls with the interest rates rising. Joe, is it still a good time to buy a house? I would say this no matter what the market is, and I'll be clear about it. If the timing's right for you, your family, your strategy, uh, what your plan is, it's always a good time to buy a house. Now, what I mean by that is if it's right for you. If you're a person who is strategically looking for opportunities and you're an investor and you're looking to buy a home, that's a property to flip or a property to hold. Um, that's a totally different story. So we'll kind of cover both of those. If you're a first-time home buyer, let's say, let's cover that first. If you're a first-time home buyer, absolutely, without a doubt, yes. I would say now is a great time to buy a home, and here's why. The rates will only go up. Sure, there could be something that happens uh, in circumstances that take place within the marketplace, the global economy, that may have the interest rates retract, but there is a 90-plus percent chance that the rates will go up and less than a 10 percent chance that the rates will come back down at this point unless something changes we're not aware of. So if you're a first-time home buyer, absolutely, yes. Now's a great time to buy a house, even though rates have come up. There's great financing opportunities out there with FHA. Or not, there's a lot of great financing terms out there. Unfortunately, financing gets complaints, frustration from people who go through financing, and it is difficult at times. <clears throat> Underwriting has changed. If you haven't done this in the last seven or eight years, could be pretty stringent. Uh, honestly, jumbo financing is really the one that is more problematic in terms of the way they underwrite and expectations. But a agent, someone that's going to represent you well and uh, get pre-approved. I can't stress this. If someone asks me, Joe, what's the first thing I should do? Before you even start to look for a house, before you even get on, the reason why you want to get approved and officially approved is that you know how much buying power you have. It's going to be an intellectual approach in the terms of you're going to sit down with pencil to paper, and and it's the best way to operate. Too many times people will just wing it, and they'll, and they'll jump online, they'll start looking, and then they'll get sucked in by looking at a buy-in, but they can't afford it. And you don't know that unless you get there. I want to encourage you, take that first step. It really, I know, I understand for some people it's a little, you take the approach, you get approved, you do things the way you're supposed to, you'll be happy that decision. 
So first-time home buyers, get out there and uh, get aggressive. Find your financing side. Remember, I could always do that for you. If you need help, that's what I'm here to do. Ready? And the same question comes up. Joe, with the rising interest rates, is it a good time to buy? It's not as easy as a shut and closed case as I would say if you're a first-time home buyer. This you have to do are taking advantage of your tax benefits. You're already building equity. So all these things are good. A lot of it will depend on a move-up buyer if it makes sense for you financially and if you're just really moving up to move up. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> if you strategically want to buy, let's say, a bigger home or a home in a different area for, let's say, schools, the benefit of schools, or maybe you want to buy a bigger home because you're going to be growing your family, maybe need more space, then the best thing to do is definitely get a realtor, get someone that's going to help you strategically look for something you can get in that particular area, uh, in that range, get an idea. No different. You also need to get pre-approved. So I would go through the pre-approval process and uh, and see if you could afford it. That's really the, the biggest part about it. Now, I would say the deciding factor, if you're a move-up buyer, I always use this rule. If you're going to own or your plan is, no, there's no guarantee in anything. If your plan is to own the home for at least five to seven years, let's say you're going to be a move up and you think you're in that home for at least five, seven or more years, then I would say, yes, now's a great time. Even though rates have low 4% range and 30 year money, you could even get something less than 4% if you're in uh, the uh, adjustable interest rates. Buy that home and be there for another five, seven plus years. Yes, great time to do it, even though rates are up. Now, if you're a move up buyer and you say, you know, I, I'm going to, I want to do this move up. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not real sure about it, but there's a good chance that I'm going to get a promotion or I'm going to leave the, the area. Careful about that. I really would. The reason why is if you are you're forced to sell in a year to two years from now, it's a more risky venture because you could over the next year or so. I'm not saying it's going to be a collapse because I don't think that's going to happen at all. But let's say you buy <clears throat> your market by 3 to 5% or whatever, and you go to sell it a year or two, two years from now, and, you know, it's worth 1.42 or 1.45. And so technically you have a 50 happen, but I think it's more risky. My, my advice, if you're a move-up buyer, be very careful. I'll just summarize it. If you do it, I encourage you to do it. If you're not sure, if there's a chance that you might have to move from that house and maybe pause in terms of doing that move up. And I would encourage you to stay in your home uh, for the next year or so and then make that move. I think it would be too risky. And so I would take that uh, and uh, use that as information and um, jump into some of the benefits uh, of preparing yourself for a purchase. And, um, with those, so uh, we'll be back with you in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Hi, this is Joe Cachera, host of Real Estate Radio Live and Bay Area Mortgage Planner. In addition to being your home financing expert, please remember you could always contact me for other trusted advisors such as realtors, financial planners, and CPAs. Please feel free to contact me at 408-838-9060. That's 408-838-9060 or email joe at reradiolive.com or visit my website at reradiolive.com for more details. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series, as we continue through the week. The topics today in the first uh, part of the podcast, I covered a, the question out there that's looming, lingering, with interest rates rising, is now still a good time to buy. I covered that kind of as a new a first-time home buyer and a move-up buyer. Now I'm going to talk about um, kind of getting yourself in uh, in shape, so to speak, financial shape, before you go 
prepare to buy a home and some tax advantages and some things to really take care of um, the process. Some people, this is a natural, um, it comes natural to them, and others, for most, I would say it does not. But before, let's say you're getting ready to buy a house for the first time or maybe even a move-up buyer, one of the things that I would do is do kind of a audit, if you will, or a review of all your current liabilities, <clears throat> assets, credit scores, and just do an overall audit and review of it. And I could help you with that. But what I mean by that is sit down, uh, if you're by yourself, your spouse, uh, partner, whatever it may be, and look at, uh, first of all, what do our credit scores look like? Get a, get a report of your, uh, a copy of your credit report. Anything changed? Anything, any surprises you don't know about? If your credit scores have changed um, for the worse, that's something you definitely need to know before you look at buying a home because it could affect your purchasing power and the rates in which you receive. So get a copy of your credit report, review that, make sure there's no mistake you know of. That's the first thing, kind of as you're um, you know, preparing for your audit prior to buying a home. The next thing is look at your liabilities. Do you have any liabilities? Credit cards, student loans, auto loans, any personal loans, anything. Take a look at those and figure out where they are, how much you owe, and is it going to affect your buying power? So if you have credit cards, for instance, and the credit cards are by far the best, the worst, the worst debt you could have in most cases. Now, there's some credit cards that are great because they have 1% interest or 0% interest for 6 months or 12 months or 18 months. If you're trying to pay down some bills, and that's certainly a good thing to do and use take advantage of that. So take inventory of those. If you have some credit cards, and let's say you owe four or 5000 it may not be a bad idea to aggressively or have a strategy to pay those down over the next couple of months <clears throat> and eliminate that credit card bill. Let's say the credit card bill, the, the minimum payment is you know two hundred fifty dollars a month. That two hundred fifty dollars a month could uh, hamper or could really change your buying power when you go to buy a house. And unless you have an unlimited resource of income, and not a lot of people do, but unless you make so much money a month, it doesn't matter. When you're really trying to optimize and buy the most house possible and get a quality. You want to eliminate as many liabilities. So credit cards, take a look at that. See where you are. If it makes sense, pay them down, pay them off. Uh, smart thing to do. Auto loans, same thing. Um, if you have an auto loan and you're making monthly payments on them, evaluate what those monthly payments are and how it might affect with. If you need help evaluating uh, and preparing for a purchase, we could sit down and look at these things. Take a look at auto loans. Now, what a lot of people don't know <clears throat> is on the lending, here's a little trick of the trade that a lot of people don't know. When you're borrowing money uh, on a mortgage or you're looking to get a mortgage, if you have an auto loan and if you pay that auto loan, typically most investors will say if you pay it down to less than 12 months, 10 months. In other words, if you, most lenders will say, I'll tell you what, if you pay that down to less than 12 months owed, we will... It, we will ignore that debt or that, li that liability. That could be a big thing. So here's another strategy that you want to understand before purchasing a home. Student debt, um, you know, uh, that type of debt is a little more challenging because typically you have interest rates may be pretty good, although interest rates on student debt and student loans aren't as great as they used to be years ago. But um, <clears throat> Those are looked at a little bit differently, even though the loan amounts could be large. The monthly minimum obligations are pretty reasonable. So it's definitely student debt, what you're looking to do. Um, are you going to accelerate the payoff? Part, the last part I will talk a little bit about is what's your down payment? Where is it coming from? What is it? How much is it? The reason this is important is use of funds uh, strategically. And let me talk a little bit about this. Gather your down payment for a purchase. Evaluate what's most important. Paying, use, let's say you have, again, you're 60000 Let's say you have a couple hundred thousand, and you're really trying to figure out the best use of funds. In a perfect world, you'd love to have 20% down. <clears throat> Don't need it, but in a perfect world, you, you should. <clears throat> Some gift funds, or part of it are gift funds. Or let's say you have a little, a little, in excess, and you have thirty or forty thousand to work with. 
you then might want to put together a strategy to say, okay, we're looking at an $800,000 purchase. We want that's the max. Knowing that, 20% 100 so we have 30 or 40,000 now. We're going to have some closing costs, but we have 30 or 40,000. Take it take really um inventory about and see if it makes sense. <clears throat> In most cases it might to pay down or pay off some of that debt so that going into your new purchase, you have lean over your head on your purchase. So maybe if you have a car loan with eight or nine thousand dollars left and it's a three hundred dollar a month payment, or maybe you have that credit card that's five thousand and it's a two hundred dollar a month payment. Maybe you use some of that thirty or 40, maybe you pay down that auto loan to less than twelve months so that it does not show up as a liability when you go to purchase a home. And any personal loans, I would be careful again on student loans is a little bit different. You don't really want to pay those off or down depending on the structure of them and what you owe on them. That, the last thing is retirement accounts, and really, I feel very strongly about this. If at all possible, don't use retirement or saving, or I'm say retirement investment accounts. Don't access those if you at all possible to buy a home. Don't borrow again unless you absolutely have to. I'm not saying it's not a, it's it's not you know it's not an option. It could be an option, and maybe you need a little bit more, and that is an option. The reason why I'm not a fan of that is because when you take money out of Remove investment opportunities. If you borrow fifty thousand from your four in that vehicle, that fifty thousand is not working for you in another diversified asset. So I'm not a big fan of borrowing against four hundred one k's, retirement accounts, investment accounts, unless you really have to. Of really eliminating, for instance, I see some people that I, I worry about that are. They save for years and years and years, and they have some good 401k and some investments build up, and then they'll use a lot of it for a down payment on a home. It's not as drastic if you're younger because you have time to recover. So that would be the last thing I say. All right, as we wrap up, again, thanks for tuning in to Allweek.com or iTunes. Thanks again for tuning in. Until tomorrow, take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.